Hi, guys. This is Christy Felk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, today I'm here to tell you about my monthly online card club for April 2024. Um, I'm featuring the Simply Zinnia bundle, and this is part of the online exclusives that came out last March. It's a beautiful bundle. I couldn't wait to make cards for this, and I hope you like them. Uh, in this video, though, I'm going to be showing you everything that my card club members get for the monthly subscription, and I'm going to uh, do the first card, the actual first card for the club. That way, those of you that are not members will get an idea how my card club is run, and you can decide if you want to join. Uh, first off, I will go ahead and show you everything that comes in this month's club. The subscription is $39.50 per month, and you do subscribe through PayPal. You do not have to have an account in order to uh, subscribe, you'll just go to uh, you can go down to my video description and then click on um, the card club link, the page for that. When you, once you get to that page, then click on the subscribe button I've got on there, and that'll take you to PayPal. And you just uh, fill in all the information they need, and PayPal will charge your card that you chose every month on that day. And if, until you cancel, you can cancel any time, but I don't think you're going to want to because if you stay in for six consecutive months, you will get a, a product bonus and it'll be sent to you in that month's kit. So every six month, continuous months you're in my uh, club, you get a bonus package of product. And um, if you were to cancel and then join again, then when you join again, it'll start all over again, uh, your six month count. So this month for their $39.50, they're going to get a full roll of the retiring black and white gingham ribbon. I love this ribbon. I'm sad to see it go. I'm glad we've still got our uh, very vanilla large check one. But this one is retiring. So everyone will get this ribbon in their kit. And then they'll get a full pack of the iridescent foil gems. The reason I picked these out is because the shiny sequins that go along with this bundle are not available right now, and they're not supposed to come till the end of the month, and that's too late for me to order them for club this month. But if it, they surprise us and we get it early, I will switch it out for those uh, shiny sequins. But it, for now, these are what you're going to get, and you'll see in the uh, first card what I'm going to do to make them look similar to those sequins. So it's a good uh, substitute. You'll also get in the club, everybody in the club gets a... Uh, pack of four cards, two of each. So there are four designs and they get everything they need to make two of each of the cards. I do all the embossing for them and I also die cut anything that's not from the featured uh, bundle. So any die cutting that needs to be done with the featured bundle has to be done by them. I will supply the cardstock for them to make their die cuts. And this is also good if they want to substitute with another set. They don't want to use the Simply Zinnia. That's fine. They can use whatever they have on hand. And they'll have paper to do any die cutting with the bundle that they've chosen. So that's why I do not offer uh, from the actual bundle. That way they can substitute if they need to. But if they want the add-on, uh, I'll tell you about the add-on here in just a minute. That's right. Let me show you the paper first. They're also going to get a half pack of the uh, Flowering Zinnias DSP. I'll show you this. The half pack, they're uh, six double-sided designs. I cut the pack in half, so they'll get two of each design that are six by 12 inch pieces. Let me see if I can get this to come out. But I love this paper. I'm going to turn it this way so you can see it a little better because I, I know this way it's not quite shown at all. But isn't that pretty? I love this. Now, the dies do not match up with any of the flowers, but that's okay. If you want to fussy cut any of these out, you definitely can. But there's this. And then this is the other side for it. So it would be like this. Then this one is really neat. This is one that you can cut in half and I'll make sure they're cut like this because these can make perfect card fronts, which is pretty cool. You'll have to cut them down a little bit because these are six inches, but it's really neat paper. And then the other side is this. So that's what that looks like. Then we've got this one here. And then the other side looks like this and this so this is an actual half pack that they'll be receiving like that then we've got this one that's the other side of that one and last but not least is this one and that other side so that is the half pack of DSP that they'll be getting so they get the DSP pack the card kits to make four each of the cards. So it's a total of eight cards. They'll get a full pack of the iridescent foil gems. 
and they'll also get a full uh, roll of the black and white gingham ribbon. So all of this is for the $39.50 for that month. And if they will have the option to add on the bundle, and here it is. This is a Simply Zinnia bundle. It's part of the online exclusives. Like I said, I'm going to move this out of the way so I can put this down. Um, I love the dies in this. Not on today's card, but on one of the cards, I will be showing how to make the... Um, Oh, zinnias with the uh, standalone dies. But there are also dies, as you can see, that will die cut uh, all the images in this stamp set. And this bundle is $52, and that is all they're going to pay. I pay the shipping and tax for them. That's just a perk that you get as a member of the club. So if you want an add-on, I pay the shipping and tax. That saves you 18%, and uh, you just pay the actual price. So they will pay, get $39.50. They will get this. And if they want the bundle, then this will be added on for $52. And I will send them a PayPal invoice and uh, they can pay me back, uh, pay me that way. Um, if you want the bundle, say you uh, subscribe and you're wanting to tell me right away you want the add-on bundle, just scroll down farther down on the uh, Card Club page and you'll see a button that says uh, um, you want the add-on, something like that. <laughs> Click on that and I'll take you to the registration form. Just fill that out and submit it. And then I'll send you a PayPal invoice within 24 hours. And to subscribe, you need to subscribe by April 15th, 2024. And you have until April 6th. And you need to submit that you want the add-on by April 15th as well. And then uh, the money is due by April 16th. So that is everything that goes along with club. Now we'll get ready to make card number one. Okay, here's the first card at the uh, club. Now I'm going to, from here on out, I'm going to talk like I do with my uh, regular uh, card club videos. So my card members that are watching this, make sure you check out the email that you received that has the PDF and uh, you'll get um, all your supplies together so you can make this card. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now if you're using the bundle, the stamps you're going to need, you're going to need this one right here, this one and sending flowers and thinking of you. So those are all the stamps you're gonna need. And for the dies, you're gonna need this one, and you're also going to need the leaves. And those are all the dies you're gonna need. Now it's time to get your DSP out. And in case you don't know, DSP means designer series paper. So whenever I say that, just get your DSP out, the pattern paper. And this is the one I want you to get out. I'm gonna show you how to make a card front with this. So what we need, we need a three by five and a quarter inch piece. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and cut at three inches first. Okay, now we need to cut the five and a quarter. This is a six inch strip right now. What we need to do is decide if we want white space or if we want all flowers. Well, I wanted mine to look more like a flower garden, so I kinda like having the white space up here. So this is the end I want to keep. So I'm gonna put it over to the left, and this is the end I wanna cut off some. So I'm gonna go to five and a quarter and cut this off, and this can be used for something else. You can put that back in your pack. And if you want another uh, one to do your, um, second card then just take it off of this strip so I will from here on out I will only be cutting for one uh, card so we've got that ready to go that's all the DSP we need so now we need to get our ribbon out okay and I need a seven inch piece so I'll line this up at the seven inches and cut and then I need a four inch piece okay and that is all the ribbon you need for one of the cards Okay, this time I think I'm going to start with the uh, inside of the card because we're not going to color the inside, so I thought we'd go a little backwards this time. I'm going to grab that big flower stamp and my Melon Mambo ink pad. The inside of the card, by the way, is four by five and a quarter, but you can find that in your PDF. And then I just want to stamp a half, well, a little more than half of the flower right there in the center. Okay, and then... I'm going to grab the leaf stamp and lemon lime twist ink, ink this up, I'm going to put a little bit right here, and then I'll put one right here. And that's the inside of the card, so put that over to the side. I am going to have to clean these off. So I'm going to be using uh, black ink here in a minute. So get all that green off of that one and get the flower all cleaned off. 
And I want you to get the half sheet that is in your cardstock. Whenever I put a half sheet of paper in the card kit, this is what you're going to do your stamping on. I give you plenty for your two cards, especially if you substitute another bundle. So I'm going to grab the flower here. Use my Tuxedo Black Memento. And whenever I ink this up, I always turn my, uh, using the Tuxedo uh, ink pad, I turn the stamp upright so I can see the stamp. And then I twist the ink and then tap. When I twist the ink pad on the stamp, it seems to ink up a lot better for me. So if you ever have trouble with our Memento pad, try that and see if it works for you. So I'm going to stamp this in the bottom left corner. It doesn't matter where we're going to be die cutting it, but I want to leave a lot of room for other cards and then I need one of the leaves so I'm going to do that with the tuxedo black two and I'll put this I'm going to put it right next to it because I want to be able to die cut both of these at the same time so I've got that done so I'm going to put this to the side so I have one more thing to stamp I had forgotten about I want you to grab that little strip that's in the pack this piece is a four by three quarter inch piece, and we're going to use that Sending Flowers and Thinking of You. I'm going to use Melon Mambo. And I'm going to stamp this probably more to the right. Well, it really does go about in the center, but a little, little to the right. There we go. Oh, I got a little mess up there. Let's see if I can fix that. I love having two sides of cardstock. Here, I'm going to take this. And take that little bit off. We'll see if that helps. Stamp this again. Oh, much better. So I'm going to use this side. So that's ready to go. So now we just need to do some coloring. So I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm done with this. I'm going to bring in this sheet again. And I'm using Stampin' Blends for the actual flower. I'm going to start off with Blackberry Bliss. I want to have a two-tone effect on this. Because here, let me show you. This flower here kind of has two different tones. I'm kind of going along with this flower right here. And I like that. So I'm going to use my Blackberry Bliss. And if you look at the flower, you'll notice there are some petals go all the way to the center. Those are the ones I want to do with the uh, Berry Burst color. But the ones that you're just seeing partial, those are the ones I'm going to do the Blackberry Bliss. So I'm going to start off with the Dark Blackberry Bliss. And everywhere I see lines on these uh, partial petals, I'm going to use the dark uh, Blackberry Bliss. I love that Stampin' Up! lets us know where the shading needs to go. So go ahead and do that on all the lines on the partial petals. Okay, I think I got them all. As you can see, up here, they're all full petals, so that's why I didn't put any Blackberry Bliss. Now I'm going to use my light Blackberry Bliss and color in the rest of these petals. And then when I'm all done, if the dark shades looks too dark in between, if the shading looks too, uh, con if they contrast too much, there we go. Then I'm going to go over where the two shades meet so I can blend um, those in. But I am coloring over the dark, and that does help blend it from the get-go. So then I may not have to go over it again. But sometimes after it dries, you do have to go over it again just to blend it a little bit. So go ahead and do that with all of the partial uh, petals. Okay, I think I'm done. As you notice, I went over a couple because a couple of the dark areas were just a little too dark. But that looks good to me now. Now I'm going to bring in my Berry Burst. Once again, I'm going to start with the dark. Make sure you, and I always look to make sure, because sometimes it's hard to tell the lids. But this says dark, so I know I've got the right one. So wherever I see lines on the rest of these, I'm going to use the dark berry burst. And you'll see little areas in between the stamen, I think it's what those are called. I keep meaning to check, look that up. You can see little lines in between. So that's part of the petal showing. But if you don't want to mess with that, don't worry about it. But I go ahead and color those a little bit. But just everywhere you see the lines, do the dark berry burst. Well, as I was coloring, I noticed I missed a couple partials. I'm going to go ahead and make them berry burst since that's the one I have out. Nobody's going to know the difference, but that was just the guideline I was telling you about. But just as long as it looks good, don't worry. And don't fuss if you're like, oh, no, I missed one. You can, you can bring your Blackberry uh, Bliss back out if you want to. 
but there's really no need. So go ahead and just color the rest of these petals with a light uh, berry burst. Um, if you go into the uh, Blackberry Bliss sections a little bit, don't worry. This is a lighter one, so it's not going to change those up. So go ahead and just color all these, making sure you color over the dark berry burst so you can blend those shades together. There we go. Aren't those colors really rich looking? I love it. Now I'm going to do the, this little center right here with pumpkin pie. And there's, the center, I think, should be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to do a little circle right here with the dark pumpkin pie. That's all I'm going to do there. And then I'm going to do the light paper, paper pumpkin, pumpkin pie, <laughs> and color the rest of the center here with the light. So the dark is just a little bit darker since it's got that little shading to it. And now if you look at the center, you can see some little dots here. I'm going to use the dark lemon lolly to color in all of those dots. The same, and I'm not going to color yet, just those dots to finish those up. Looks like I missed a little bit of where I should have some uh, berry burst. I think I'm, I am going to come back because those are petal sections for sure. If they don't, if they're questionable, they can still be yellow. No big deal. But I can tell I missed a couple spots here. A little too much white space right there. I don't mind a little bit, but that's just a little too much. Okay, so I've got all of the dots dark. It looks like I got a stamen. Don't worry, the, this light lemon lolly will lighten that up. So I'll just color all of these. And it, the reason I start from dark to light, now I can go over. I'm coloring a little bit on the berry burst, and it's not hurting it at all. Got that all ready. And the thing I love about this, I love that these almost look 3D now. Isn't that cool? Just have They just kind of pop up with being such a lighter color than the rest of the flower. So now I'm going to grab Old Olive. I'm going to do the dark Old Olive. And once again, wherever I see lines in the leaves, that is where I'm going to put the dark. And I don't want it to be a straight line. You see how I kind of made a couple little zigzags right there. So just color everywhere you see lines where you think it should be dark. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to grab my light old olive and color the rest of the leaves. Now this one, I have found out old olive, at least with my markers, I am going to have to blend a little bit more. So I'm going to color the whole thing real quick. And then you'll see the difference. This doesn't take that long, so I probably won't speed it up. As you can see, the dark, especially after it starts to dry, it's a lot darker up on that top one. So I'm going to definitely go over that dark and even darken, go over the light again. That kind of darkens the light up a little bit. And that makes it so it's a smoother con, uh, change to the shades. We don't want that big contrast between the two shades. That middle section is really dark on this one. There we go. That looks much better. So the alcohol and the ink kind of blends the colors together. So that is what that should look like. So we are all done coloring and stamping, so let's get the die cutting machine out. Okay, if you have our stamp and cut and emboss machine, uh, to set it up for die cutting, you need that base platform number one, and then die plate number two, and a standard cutting plate number three. I'm going to grab this, this piece. It's the only thing we have to die cut. I'm going to grab the flower die. And there's like a 50-50 chance. That didn't line up because it's... It's longer horizontally, so just turn this 180 degrees and then it lines up just fine. It's not perfectly round, so it's not that hard to line up. So I'm going to put this on here, make sure that uh, opening in the die, the center opening is completely filled in with the image. I'm putting two pieces of post-it tape on here because that holds it down and makes it to where it doesn't move on me when I put it through the die cutting machine, but that adhesive is also light enough that it does not tear up my cardstock when I go to take it off. You can use washi tape, but it's, I think the post-it tape's a lot better. You can also use post-it notes. If you have post-it notes, that works just as good and uh, to tack those down so they don't move on you. Now I'm going to put another standard cutting plate on top. And I'm going to run this through. And these are going to be all cut out for me. I love dies. 
we've got that one. And then, last but not least, our beautiful zinnia. Okay, so that is actually all the die cutting we're going to do. So let's put this away and finish the card. Okay, I want you to get the card base out. This is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of Melon Mambo. I'm going to fold these corners. I mean, fold it so the corners meet. There we go. That looks lined up pretty good. I'm going to grab my bone folder. Get that folded really nice. And it is a landscape card, so you want the fold to be on the left. I want you to grab the uh, Melon Mambo piece that's embossed in your kit. This is a one by five and a quarter inch piece. And I embossed it with the Zinnia folder. Uh, this is also in the online exclusives. The one the way this works, it opens, here, here's the opening here. When the uh, flowers actually go this way. So since I wanted them to go upright this way, I put it in sideways and just put it right along that line and then run it through. And whenever you run it, uh, an embossing folder in, make sure it goes in fold first. That protects the folder. So that is how that was done. But that was with the Zinnia folder. And I want to grab that DSP piece. So I'm going to grab the 7-inch piece of ribbon. And I'm at, oh, and let's get some tear and tape. I almost forgot. It's easier to get the tear and tape first before you start putting the ribbon, wrapping the ribbon around. Make sure the length of the tape is uh, longer than the width of the ribbon. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. And I'm actually, just to save on paper, I could have put a white background on here, but it would have been completely covered up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this ribbon right along the very right edge of this embossed piece, okay? Kind of have the tails that are hanging over around the same length. It doesn't have to be this, exactly the same. Nobody's going to see it. But you don't want one end to be too short and it starts to fall off of your uh, card. So this is going to be on like so, right along the edge. I'm going to take one of these strips. And this one's going to be put on a little different. It's going to go on this way. So I'm kind of uh, covering up half of that ribbon because I want the adhesive to get on the cardstock. But that'll hold that down. Bring this along the edge. Looks like I got a little bit of tape showing, but I'll fix that here in just a minute. Once again, make sure you don't see any of the Melon Mambo here on the edge. Get this right along the edge here. Well, there we go. I'm going to take my tear and tape, start here on the edge, and make sure I go right along half of that ribbon. There we go. So that's what it should look like. I'm going to take my paper snips and not cut off that little bitty section of the tape that's showing. I don't want that showing. I'm kind of cutting my at an angle. That way, it definitely isn't showing. Makes it a little shorter then. Okay, now I'm going to take some adhesive. Well, actually, I'm going to put this on first. I think this is easier to put on. So I'm going to turn this over and put some seal on it. Like so. And then when I put this on, I want the border of the Melon Mambo card base that's showing around this. I want the top and bottom and the right side to be about the same showing. So just kind of eyeball that. Once it looks pretty good, then push it down. And that is looking pretty good. So I'll put that down. And now I'm going to take this. I'm going to take a, some uh, seal and put it along this end. I'm even going to put some here in the middle. Make sure you go to the corners. That way those corners don't pop up. Especially with a narrow strip like that. I'm going to take my Take Your Pick tool. I'm making sure that that adhesive is pushed down really, really well. Because you don't want any air bubbles in it. Because it's a little easier to get the paper backing off without picking up the adhesive. And I'm kind of going between the end and the ribbon. The end of the tape and the ribbon. If I do it too close to the ribbon and then I kind of jiggle it a little bit and that loosens it up. If I go to an end, sometimes that picks up the adhesive. And if I start where the rubber's at, sometimes that picks up the adhesive too. And I just want the paper backing. I'm going to go on here to kind of jiggle it a little bit. Loosens it up. Kind of leave it flat too. There we go. I kind of had an angle and I could tell it was getting some adhesive. There we go. So that is ready to go. Make sure that ribbon is on the right side. And then you're going to look, line it up with the paper. And then make sure the border here 
of the Mellon Mumbo card base is about the same as what it is all the way around. You don't want to have a gap in between the paper. So if you have to move it over a little bit, if you do have a gap between the paper and this, and it's okay if the border around the card base is not exact. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. But make sure you keep it up a little bit because that tearing tape attaches really, really good. So I just had it up above a little bit, kind of moved it around until I had it where I wanted it. Then when you know where you want it, push it down. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to grab the greeting. And I didn't want just the straight edge. That's why I kind of went to the right a little bit more. Probably could have gone a little bit farther, but this is still going to work. I'm going to grab my paper snips. And I'm just going to cut this angle, cut this at an angle. There we go. So that is ready to go. So I'm going to turn this over. Don't forget, ignore my boo-boo. <laughs> and one thing I want to do, I don't want to have uh, dimensionals up here near the top. So when I turn this over, I know this is still my bottom, even though that looks upside down. Don't worry about it. Don't let that throw you. I'm going to put one here near the bottom. One here at the end. And then I'll do another middle one here near, near the bottom. Okay. So this is my bottom. There we go. And we've got them right along the bottom. So I'm going to take the paper backings off. I'm going to line the straight edge of this actually with the straight edge of the card base. If you want to do it on the paper, you go right ahead. I have it about right there. I'm going to make sure it's right there along the edge of my card base. I'm just going to hold one end and make sure this long strip goes down straight. That looks pretty good. I'm at an angle, so it might be a little crooked. I think I got it, though. Then push that down. Now bring the flowers the flower in and the leaf in, okay? This is just going to go on with regular seal. Doesn't that look pretty on the other side, too? I <laughs> love that the blends soak through. If you want more of an imp uh, impressionistic look, that would definitely work. So I only put the adhesive here in the center. I'm going to angle this a little bit because I still want to see that uh, Blackberry Bliss underneath it. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to put this down. I'm not going to put it down real hard because I might want to lift it up again. Now I'm going to put some adhesive on the leaves. And since I put adhesive just in the center, this is going to be able to go under here like so. Get angled. And I, want, I kind of liked having this leaf up a little bit. So you can definitely do that. Attach it. There we go. Now that I've got it where I want it, I can push it all down. And having the dimensionals down here at the bottom made it so I could stick that flower in without the dimensionals in the way. I've got one last thing to do before the bling. Get that four-inch piece of the ribbon out. And I'm going to tie this on. Always do it perpendicular. I'm only doing a single knot. And then as I'm doing it, I, want the, I liked it better with the tails kind of going this way. It can go straight with the, paper, with the ribbon, too. But you can hold on to that knot and kind of yank them down a little bit, pull, tug on them just a little bit. And that gets them to go the way you want them to. And now I'm going to cut these at an angle, the ends, because I don't want them hanging over the edge of the card base. Okay, and while we're at it, let's grab the inside of the card. Put some adhesive on it. And that will go on the inside of the card. Now we've got our bling, so grab those foil gems, full name iridescent foil gems. And you can put them on clear if you want to keep them clear. I wanted to use the colors that are in the shiny um, oh, sequence that we can't get right now. So I'm grabbing a Melon Mambo um, blend, and I'm going to use the dark one because um, it does go on a little lighter, so I think the dark one's going to be perfect. If you want to go to the lighter one, go right ahead. But what I'm going to do, you want to use the brush tip. <laughs> and we need, uh, let's see, two each size. You can see there's, there are large and small ones, just like the sequins. Those have come in two different sizes, too. And then we will color these in. I'm using a very light touch, like I did with coloring, especially with these, because you do not want to fray that tip. And now I'm going to do a couple of the small ones. 
I love these embellishments. Any clear ones that we have, I love being able to use my Stampin' Blends to change the colors. Okay, might want to wait a few seconds for them to dry. So I'll just kind of do this. The alcohol ink dries really fast. So it doesn't take long at all for that to dry. Now I'm going to grab one of the large ones. Let's start with the large ones. And I'm going to put one right here. Now your flowers may be in different areas, so you put them wherever it looks best on your card. I think I'm going to grab a small one here and put it right there. Grab another small one, put it there, and then I'm going to grab a big one. You could put it on your greeting if you want to, but since this is already raised up, I want it. I didn't, decided not to do that because I didn't want um, it to be too thick for mailing. I think I'll just put it real close, about right there. So that is the first card for club for April. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And now my club members, if um, to make the uh, Cards number two, three, and four, you'll have to go to the exclusive video and you'll find that link in the PDF and also in the email I sent you. For those of you that are watching that are not club members, you're like, boy, that looks like fun. I'd love to make the uh, uh, th other three cards. Then go click on that card club link down below in the video description. Once you're there, all the information is there. There's even a uh, link to for a uh, stamp club fact sheet. Click on that and that'll give you answer any questions. I made a little question list of things I thought you might ask, and you can find uh, the answers there. But then you'll also find the link to subscribe, so just click on the subscribe link, and it's actually a banner picture, and fill out the information PayPal needs. If you have a PayPal account, just sign into your PayPal account, and if you don't have a PayPal account, don't worry about it, just fill in the information and submit it, and uh, PayPal will charge your card $39.50 every month to get everything that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And uh, if you want the add-on, then scroll down near the bottom after you subscribe and fill out, uh, uh, click on the add-on button there, fill out that form to let me know you want it, and then I will send you a PayPal invoice within 24 hours, and that is, uh, the payment is due April 16th. Now to subscribe, the uh, last day to subscribe to get the Simply Zinnia Card Club is April 15th, so make sure you get signed up real soon. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. And I would be happy to send out your first catalog for you free. This is the brand new catalog. I just got a couple boxes of them the other day. So click on the contact me link below in the video description and give me your, ma give me your mailing address. And I'll send them to you right away. Now, if you have a stand up demonstrator, contact them. But you do need to live in the United States and not have a demonstrator to contact me and I'll send your first set out to you free. And that's the one that's current. There are two old ones that are current. If you want those, let me know that if you want those. Those are only good for a couple more weeks, so that's why I'm not showing those off right now. But this is the new annual catalog. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you uh, in the next one. And hopefully you can join me for my uh, weekly lives. They're every Thursday night at uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube and on my Facebook page. See you later. Have a great day, guys. Bye.